G'day mateys, today, new episode. We are gonna be working on one of my beloved childhood memories today. We're working on the Commodore 64. I got one of those back in about 1987. We bought it from Kmart out at Horsham in country Victoria, and it was faulty on arrival. So we had to drive like the 50 kilometers back to get another one. And then we got that one home and the Commodore worked, but the disc drive didn't. So dad was getting a bit annoyed and he took it all the way back to Horsham again. And we got another one. And finally, third time lucky, it worked. Recently, I got another Commodore 64 and I plugged it in. And I was so excited. I found one of my all time favorite games, which was Gianna Sisters. Of course, back then I didn't realize that Gianna Sisters was actually just a rip off of Mario Brothers. But there we have it, a bit of trivia for you. So I got it out, I hooked it up on the bench, and we have a problem. So here we are, we are going to fix the problem. We have a faulty CIA chip. Uh, the problem we were having is that we use a joystick, we can jump, we can go downwards, we can go right, we can push the button, but we can't go left. No matter how much we go left, it doesn't work. I'll show you what we mean right now. I can jump. Look, I can't go backwards. Forwards, not backwards. Hmm. No! No! <laughs> Can we go back with the keys? <laughs> so you've seen the video of it not working and me also playing Gianna Sisters very badly. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab the Commodore 64, pop it right here on the bench after a bit of magic and get started. And there we go, one Commodore 64. This is the Slimline model, the one that was around in 1987. Looks identical to the original one that I had. But this is faulty, so we need to fix it. That are three screws. One, two, warranty seal already broken. Three! So what we need to do is place this down, grab our trusty screwdriver, and give it a go. Screws come out quite easily on these. There's one, two, one in the middle, there we go, so we now flip this over, hopefully the screws fall out, okay, two out of three, ain't bad as Meatloaf would say, so, get it in the corner here, oh, they always stick just here, so, pop it up, bit of jiggery pokery, there we go, now inside here, I'll flip this up so you guys can have a bit of a look-see, we have a bit of a cable. Now this cable goes to the LED. We just need to grab that, pull him out, and get rid of the lid. Needs a bit of a clean, looks a bit grubby, but there we go. So, we need two more screws to remove the keyboard. Screw one. A bit longer than I thought it was. Still going. There we go. Screw number two. Then the keyboard will just pull towards you slightly so you can get your fingers under it, then slide it backwards. It locks in under these little clip sections here. So we'll pull that forward. And there's our ribbon cable. Look at the quality cardboard shielding. Well done, Commodore. So we'll pop this out. Wiggly wiggly, there's our keyboard. Look at that, even original sticky tape. What's it say on here? It says, made in Malaysia. Actually, there's a date code on this one. 
1989 this one there you go so slide this here and pull this forward and here we go this is the cost reduced version of the Commodore 64 they integrated a lot of the old circuitry into the chips We've got a few of them are socketed fortunately the CIA here which is the 6526A is the one that we have a problem with so we need to take him out and he's socketed bonus makes it much much easier so we will get our tools I'm going to trust the IC remover and we'll take him out so we need to pop that just in under there same on the other side get a nice good firm grip and just wiggle it a little bit forward and backwards and out she comes so there we go nice clean no bent pins now the notch is here so and it's still here and it's marked on the silk screen that's what they call the printing on the circuit board so we'll move that one to the side and we will get our replacement one had to order this had to wait for it everything takes so long at the moment so pull this out and this is actually a much older one look at this this is a six five two six but there's no a see the original one that was in here had the Commodore logo on it and it has an a now apparently these are compatible however the old one was able to do up to two megahertz apparently as this one will do it but it's a little bit noisy on the bus lines so it will do the job for us quite nicely so we'll take this out any bent pins no awesome so I'll bring this up so you guys can have a bit of a closer look so here we go here We've got the notch up on the top line that up on one side like so just in slightly I'll move it around so you can see the other side so it's almost lined up so we'll just push these pins in just a little bit so we're pushing down that's looking fairly good and now push hard and that is in so I'll put it down on the bench again just push a little bit more and that's great so that is now done so hopefully when we go back we can check that and see if my Commodore 64 works in what I used to call the games room but recently someone memed my games room and it's now known as the pleasure room so we will show you that meme as well so we we'll put this back together really quickly Here's the keyboard. You can't put this on the wrong way. If you have a look at the, the pin header here, there's one that's filled in. So that's called a key. If we look down here, there's a pin missing. So this will only go in one way. So we'll get the cable. We'll align it up. Very straightforward. And push it down. That's in. Fabulous. Grab the keyboard. Slide it into these slots here. And then we'll have to slide it over and you can see that one hole is already lined, other holes are lined. Great stuff. Pop the screws back in. There we have it. We'll pop the old chip in here. I'll mark it later to say that there is an issue with it. Pop that in there, Ooh. seal her up, now let's pop the lid back on. So, firstly remember to put this fella back on. So when we did this, it goes right in here, so I'll move that to the back. I might lift this cardboard up, so I can get my fingers in here a little better. Yes, thread goes towards the right, put that in, yes, it's all lined up, so some clips at the back here that you've got to align, we go click, there we go, that's back to normal, flip it over, it's one screw in the middle already because the warranty sticker held that one in place, here we go,
okay, that's all back together. So we will now go take it to the other room and give it a try. So here we are with the Commodore 64 in the pleasure room. Let's turn it on. She come up. And there she does, the good old Commodore 64 beginning. Now what I've got here, I do have a disk drive. It's a, actually it's a rare one. This is actually a 1570. Long story behind it, but basically it was designed to go with the Commodore 128, but they didn't have any double-sided <laughs> disks in stock. They only had single-sided and they had too much demand so they put these single sided ones in and call it 1517 put it in the old style case then they released the 1571 which was the double sided really quirky but it's there but the game I want is Gianna Sisters and that is on my little unit down here this is a Pi 1541 so it's a Raspberry Pi and it's got a little board on the top that gives us the serial and it emulates a disk drive it's got a little screen on the top so I need to select with the little push buttons on the side, what I want to run. So we we'll select, move down to games, got Ghouls and Goblins and Gianna Sisters. So we'll now select that. So that's now loaded into the Pi, but now we have to do the loading of the computer. So the old L O A D star, comma eight, comma one. Now I'm going to cut this because these things take. A very long time to load. So after what seemed like 20,000 hours, we've finally got to the command prompt. Now we type in run. And we wait some more. So we'll come back after this is done. Woohoo! Let's play Gianna Sisters! So that's it for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to click down on that subscribe button. Thumbs up, thumbs down. It doesn't matter. Thanks guys and we'll see you again next week.